I'm reading from Psalm 116, verse 12 to 40. The word of God there is, What shall I render unto the Lord? For all his benefits unto me. I will take up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vow unto the Lord now in the presence of all this people. And the book of Romans chapter 10 and verse 10 says, Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. Amen? Amen. And today we thank God for the work that is called me here to do from Jamaica. I could have been disobedient and stayed there, but I thank God that I came not knowing how, not knowing what I was coming with, not knowing how I was going to get to church, not knowing where we were going to worship. Just knew that God said, it's time for you to go home, and I came. And today I am very broken doing this writing of fellowship because I'm just so humbled before God, and it's just a humbling experience to know that God can pick up any of us, any one of you that is surrendered to God. God can use you. Amen. And to know that God has chosen me to be your spiritual mom. And he could have chosen anybody. But he chose me. There are people that have been in churches longer than I have been. And there are people that maybe speak more tongues than I do. But I thank God that he has chosen me. And the right of fellowship is biblical. It is when Paul was ready to go on the mission field, he was sent Barnabas with him. Amen? Amen. And when you're being received into the body of Jesus Christ, that means that this becomes your church. It doesn't mean that this is part, part of your church and, and down the road there is another church that you'll go to part time, but this is your church. This is where you pay your tithes. This is where you give God one tent. This is where you serve. You help me to build. You don't leave building to me alone. Amen. Amen. You look for the department where the church organizational structure, which I've based it. What I've done on my own is to do all the foundation work to get you ready for this day. But now I won't be doing it anymore. Because you will have to help me. And I've got the church organizational structure that I was sharing with the minister that came for the, the service last night, for the meeting last night. And you will have to put your name in a box there according to what I've got all the positions. And you choose the position that you want to work in. Because you must work. We must build the kingdom of God together. It is a key to every Christian that they pray. Even if you miss church, you don't miss prayer service. I don't want you to miss church, but prayer meeting is when you lay out before God and cry out to God. And it is in prayer meeting that you develop the skills that are required, according to the book of Corinthians, the skills that are required to function effectively in the body of Jesus Christ. He gives them to you, but they must be developed. You must know what you're called to do. You can't be an eye working as, a, as an ant. You can't be an ant working as a foot. And it's praying to God that helps you to understand what you're called to do in the body of Christ. And your service is not to Prophet Copeland Blake. Your service is unto God. I'm serving and you are serving. We are all servants in the body of Jesus Christ. I'm leading you because God has called me to lead you, but we are all servants in the body of Jesus Christ. So when you come to church, you come to serve. You come to give God the best. Without your tithes, we cannot build the church. We need to build the kingdom. One tent help us. This, is, this church is the pain and labor and long suffering of the family of Baltimore Road New Testament Church of God. The tighter that came together and helped pastor to build the sanctuary for Jesus Christ. Amen. And I think God brought us here that this can be a, a, a testimony an example for us that if we come together as that family did, then we can have a sanctuary for ourselves, no less than this. But it takes dedication and it takes commitment. It takes being sold out to God. It takes a made up mind. It takes holding my hand up and not pushing me down. 
I pray as well as I'm, as I'm getting ready to receive you into the body of Jesus Christ. That you will also have to watch over my spirit. I need your prayers. I'm only human. No pastor stand alone. The congregation back the pastor. Amen. The congregation pray for the pastor. Amen. The congregation hold up the pastor. There are days when you must put aside. Like a Tuesday you say, this is the day when we fast for pastor. Because if the enemy is going to attack your church, he's going to start with the pulpit. He's not going to start with the pew. Amen. He's going to look for the top and then he's going to work his way down. Amen. Now I pray that you will come together and build with me together. Amen. 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 So we read the Psalms today, the scripture today. What, what I have read it to you. What shall we render unto God? I want you to say after me, we the members. Members of end time ministry, of end -time ministry. Do, solemnly. do solemnly covenant together, covenant together. With, God. with God, with one another, with one another. And, with Pastor Copeland Blake. and with Pastor Copeland Blake that we will speak truthfully, speak truthfully to, one another. to one another, saying that which is good, that which is good. to the use of edifying, the use of edifying. one another. The kingdom, of God, the kingdom of God, according to Ephesians 4, to Ephesians 4 verse, 29, verse 29, we shall abstain from fleshy lust, from fleshy lust which, war the soul, which war against the soul. We will be kind to one another, putting away all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking. We will be kind to one another, another. tender-hearted, tender -hearted. forgiving one another, another. Even, as Christ, even as God for Christ, for Christ's sake, sorry, for Christ's sake. has forgiven us. Amen. 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 Now I'm going to ask you a question, and if you agree, just lift your right hand and say, I do. As members of this church, do you promise to work with me to build the body of Jesus Christ? I do. Will you attend the church regularly? I do. Will you attend prayer meeting? I do. Will you, will you tithe into this church? I do. And help to build the church? I do. Will you keep your bodies clean before God? I do. Will you accept every the living sacrifice? I do. Will you try your best to put away all manner of sin? I will. God bless you. Amen. Hold your hands with me. Father, they've made their vows before you and the angels today. They have confessed that they will help me to build your kingdom. Father, even you did not build the kingdom alone. You came to earth, God, with no, no pulpit. You were in a beautiful synagogue, but you saw the people on the street that you wanted. And you went out on a borrowed boat and used that boat for your pulpit. You had no body to send, but you saw four fishermen fishing. And you called them and began ministry with them. And many of these that are here today, God, I don't know them, but you sent them. And I thank you for that. Father, help me to be the mother that, and the pastor, spiritual mother, the counselor, the leader, the pastor, the mouthpiece that you've called me to be for them. Help me to direct them in the path that you will have them to walk only in the street and now. Help them to submit their bodies before you and live in sacrifice. Only unacceptable because your words decree that that is their reasonable service. And call them not to be conformed to this word, but to be transformed by the renewing of their mind. Oh God, help them to shun the very appearance of evil. Father, we know it takes time to be holy on this journey. And Father, teach your people how to be holy. Because without holiness, it's impossible to please you. One day at a time, sweet Jesus. 
That is all that I'm asking for from you for this new church. Now God bless us. Grow together with our center in to guide and to guide us. In Jesus' name, put your hands together. Amen. I'm going to begin with the names as I'll have them here. Put your hands together for Sister Jewel Pearson as she comes. Sister Jules, it is with joy that I'm receiving you today as a member of the body of Jesus Christ. I'm so excited today that I can be, you can allow me to be the pastor for you, spiritual mother. It is with joy today that I'm extending to you the right and the fellowship. God bless you. Work in the heart. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Sister Natalie Kitchen. Praise the Lord. Sister Gittin, I love you. I thank you for being a part of End Time Ministry. And it is with great joy that I'm extending to you the right and the fellowship. Work with me. God bless you. Brother Bo Akpili. God bless you, Brother Bo. We love you. He did the offering so well this morning. Brother Bo, we love you and we thank God for you. Amen. And it's with joy that I'm receiving you today as a member of Entire Ministry. Work with me, help me to build the kingdom. Thank God. Put your hands together for Sister Nicola Wall. Sister Nicola Wall. together for her very much. I'm going to tell you why I say that. When I came from Jamaica, I said to you I did not have a car. The long and the short of it, because I don't want to get emotional, because when she gave me the car, tears came to my eyes and she took the picture of me, the tears running and you don't want to see it. that beautiful um, convertible Audi outside. Sister Nicole just came, gave it to me, handed me with the keys, gave me the love book. And I told them yesterday that the only thing I need I've been away. Big eyeglasses. A little pool dog. Because I saw a lady driving past in one of them. They said, oh, she looks so stupid in this one. I was, just only, I was only kidding. Sometimes we have to joke our things. Sometimes I get too serious at times. But we love her and we thank you, Sister Nicole. God bless you. You're truly a daughter. Amen. And Sister Nicole, it's me joy that I extend to you the right and the fellowship today. I pray that God will bless you that lovely, warm daughter's heart that you have. I pray God that, that God will just allow you to... to to help us to build his kingdom and that God will use you to be such an example in this troubled world. God be with you, Sister Nicole. <laughs> Sister Sharon Tear, and can we have Brother Kirk Bartley at the same time? And can we have Sister Heather Bartley, husband and wife, come together? Praise the Lord, put your hands together for them. Sister Sharon, I love you. I thank God for your life and I thank God for you coming on board and time ministry. May God bless you and may you continue to be a great worker, a shining light in the house of God. It's with joy that I receive you today. Amen. Brother Kirk, Sister Kirk, Brother Kirk. Okay, Kirk. Brother Kirk, you've been working so much in the time ministry and we thank God for you. We thank God for your commitment. We, we see that you're going to have to build this kingdom, great this kingdom of God. It's 
be joined today that are extending to you the right of your fellowship. Continue grounded in God as we build this kingdom together. God bless you. Fellowship. And I pray that God will bless you as you continue to serve in the kingdom of God. God bless you. Can I have Sister Beverly Wall, Sister Scott, and Sister Sister Gwen, Gwyneth Scott, Brother Simon, Sister Sandra Allen, Sister Annette Ones, Sister Shekinah, yeah, which is Minister Sasha Peart. Brother Anthony and Sister Vanessa Turner. Sister Beverly, come this way. We love you so much and we thank God for you. And and this is actually this is Sister Nicole's mom. Amen. Put your hands together for her. And it is with such joy. We thank you so much for your love, for your kindness, for everything that you're doing so far in entire ministry. May you continue to help us to build. And it is with joy today that I'm standing extending to you the right and the fellowship. Stay blessed. God bless you. Amen. The next one, Brother Simon, I extend to you today the right and the fellowship. And I pray that God will bless you. God will use you greatly in his kingdom. Continue to grow in the body of Jesus Christ. Amen. Who's the next one? Sister Annette, the Lord bless you. And we just thank God for your life. And as you continue to Help us to grow the church of God. I pray that God will use you more and more and more and that you will grow more in the Lord and be used greatly in his kingdom. And I extend to you the right and the fellowship. Stay focused in Jesus Christ. Amen. Sister Sandra, we love you. Wow. She's my daughter. God bless you, Sister Sandra. And we thank God she came all the way from Birmingham. Amen. Put your hands together for her. It's such joy that we are extending to you the right of the fellowship today, Sister Sandra. May God continue to use you in the entire ministry as we build the kingdom together and grow together and do the things and things of God together. It is with great joy that I extend to you the right of the fellowship. God bless you. Brother, Brother Tony, work or put your hands together for him. Brother Tony, we love you. And we thank God for you. And we pray that we will continue to grow and grow and grow and work together in the body of Jesus Christ. It is with joy that I'm extending to you the right and the fellowship. Stay focused. Stay building the kingdom of God. Amen. Sister Shekinah, the prophet, put your hands together for her. Amen. God, she has got such powerful. She's the prior engine of the church. Amen. We all know that. And it is with great joy, Sister Shekinah, that I'm extending you to you today, the right and the fellowship. I pray that you will stay in the body of Jesus Christ and with end time ministry, growing with us, building with us as we work together to build God's kingdom. God bless you. Amen. Sister Vanessa. Sister Vanessa, God bless you. We love you. We thank you for submitting your life and your ministry to end time ministry. And as you stay with us and go with us, we pray that God will use you powerfully and that he will develop the gifts and callings and talents that are hidden and buried inside of you. May you be a great shining light in this world. God bless you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Sister Gemma Dixon, Brother Joe, Brother um, Joma Campbell, Sister Grayson Reed, Brother, Sister Selena McIntosh, Brother Jonia Compton, Sister Paul at Works, could you all come put your hands together for them as they come? We're going to ask Sister Lisa, SR, Sister Grace, Sister Shane McDonald, Brother Sh Sister Shereen McDonald Clark, and Sister Nadine Ferguson to stand as well. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Could you just join the queue? Join the queue. Put your hands together for them. part of end time ministry and we pray that God will just use you so powerfully in this church and we pray that you will grow and grow and grow in the grace and knowledge of God it's with great joy that I'm extending to you the right and the fellowship God bless you praise the Lord my sister put your hands together for her we love you we thank you 
Pastor Mitty Life to End Time Ministry. It is with great joy that I extend to you today the right of a fellowship to receive you as a part of the family of End Time Ministry. God bless you. Brother John, we thank you for surrendering your life to Jesus. And that today you belong to End Time Ministry. You're a part of the family of End Time Ministry. And today I extend to you the right of a fellowship. Grow in grace, find your department, work in it, and know that God wants you to be. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Mr. Jen, Mr. Jenna, it is with joy that I extend to you. I just need your mom. Oh, it is with joy that I extend to you the right hand of fellowship today. I pray that God will use you powerfully in this church, that you will grow and grow and grow in grace. Stay in with us, stay in the body of Jesus Christ. Find your gift and calling and be a great vessel in the house of God. God bless you. Praise the Lord. My sister, it is with joy that I'm extending you to you today, the right and the fellowship. And I pray that as you come to be a part of this family, that God will use you and that you will grow. You will grow as a sweet, beautiful plant in the house of God, where it to be used by God, and that gifts and callings will be identified and will be used in the body of Jesus Christ. God bless you. It's a joy that I'm extending you to you today, the right hand of fellowship. I pray that you will be an example in this troubled world. And I pray that God will use you mightily. And I pray that you will not look back into the world, but you will stay in the house of God and grow and grow and grow. It is a great joy that I'm extending to you, the right hand of fellowship. God bless you. My sister, God bless you. It is a great joy that I'm extending to you today, the right hand of fellowship. I pray that as you stay in the house of God, that God will use you powerfully. The power of God will be with you, and He will lift you to great eyes with Him. And stay in the house of God and grow and grow and grow in Jesus' name. God bless you. My sister, Mr. Nat, we love you. God bless you. It is with joy today that I'm extending to you the right hand of fellowship. May you be a shining light in the house of God. May the power of God continue to fall upon you. And may you be used and grow to great acts in Christ. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. God bless you to be such a joy that I'm extending to you the right and the fellowship to be receiving you the part of the family of end time ministry. May God use you powerfully in this church. May you grow and grow and grow and be a bright light shining in the body of Jesus Christ. The gifts and callings may come for you and you may, may be used powerfully by God. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Praise the Lord, my God bless you. It is with joy that I'm extending to you today the right hand of fellowship. Sister Lisa, we thank you for your commitment, your support, your financial support to this church. The God knows how much you've helped us even to secure where we are, that we can be here. And I pray that God will continue to use you, grow you, and bless you. And you will be a rich and in the body of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Sister Jackie Ramsey, Sister Primrose, Sister Rosie Simpson, Sister Jackie Powell Wint and Sister Paulette Barrett. Put your hands together for them as they come. It is with such joy that I extend to you the right and the fellowship today. I pray that God will use you powerfully in this church and that you will grow and grow and grow in service in the house of God. Let's see. My, my sister, we love you, God bless you. And it is with joy that I extend Extend to you today from the right hand of fellowship. I pray that God will use you mightily. And I pray that you stay connected with Jesus and be used powerfully in the house of God. God bless you. Sister, sister Pat. Oh, Sister Rose. All right, Sister Rose, God bless you. She's a long time member, just get to the right hand of fellowship. Put your hands together for her. Sister Rose, we love you. We thank God for you. And we pray that God will use you mightily in this church. Powerfully, and every healing that your body requires, I pray that you will receive it and that you will grow in the knowledge and the things of Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. My sister, it is with joy that I'm extending to you today the right and the fellowship. I just pray that God will do so mighty, powerfully in this house. I pray that you will grow from power to power, from authority to authority, extending strength. In Jesus' name.
Amen. My sister, God bless you. It is a joy that I'm extending to you the right to the fellow. And I pray that God will just lose your mind to you. That you will stay surrendered to God. And that you will just grow with us, work with us, grow in the body of Christ. Give up everything that is holding you back. And hold on to Jesus. In Jesus' name is a joy that I know extend to you the right to the fellowship. God bless you. Put your hands together for them. If you're in the body of a time, should receive that you should come now and be received because I'm releasing that now. And what I'm going to do quickly, I'm going to consecrate the workers of the church. All right, put your hands together for Mother Richard. Can somebody let me use Bible? The Bible. Brother Richard, it's with joy that I'm extending to you today the right and the fellowship. We thank you for coming back home. Put your hands together for him. He went away, but he's back home. And he's back home in his position as a media person in the church. So we thank God for your life and we pray that every brokenness will be made. We're here with your family. I just feel like giving you a hug. But I'm extending to you the right of fellowship. God bless you. Amen. And if there's somebody who wants to give her life to the Lord, can you come? Sister Lucinda, put your hands together for her. God bless you, Sister Lucinda. Sister Lucinda, will you accept the Lord as your Savior? Yes. Do you mean to follow him as of today? Will you turn your life completely to him and look away from sin? I'm going to pray for her right now. Put your hands together for her. And to Jesus. Sister Lucinda, will you be ready for the next watery baptism? Huh? Okay, let me ask a question. Pastor, she said she got baptized when she was 12. And she's asking if she can avoid being baptized again. Jesus Christ handled the matter very delicately. When he wrote, when he wrote to a church that had stopped loving him the way they used to. And he expressed his love for the church. But he said to the church, you must do your first work again. You must publicly declare again your love for me that everybody can see. So we are not saying that you have fallen into apostasy. What we are saying is if you say to us here, this is how I say to my nurture group, if you say to us here, I'm going to Lewisham, you've got to be practical. If, if you say to us here, I'm going to Lewisham, and we rejoice with you, then you go up to the top of Padman Street, and you turn right, and you go went to Peckham. Then we say, what's your name? Lucinda. Sister Lucinda said she was going to Lucia, but she's now gone to Peckham. Even if you turn around and then go towards Lucia, we're not going to take you serious. Because in our eyes, you went off the track. You need to, ex you need to once again announce to us publicly I need your support. I made up my mind. I'm going to Lucia now. Stand with me. Amen. And that's what baptism is about. If I, if I can just say that baptism, we know it doesn't save you. It is an announcement of your entry into public ministry. Amen. God said to Moses, the sons of Aaron and the sons of Levi, baptized them at age 30 
bring them in the door of the tent in front of the congregation and wash them. After that, they are a part of the priesthood. Jesus, as he came to earth and he walked, he said to some people on a number of occasions, my time is not yet. But the day he was baptized, he never made that statement again because his public ministry started. In fact, that day he went to the wilderness and he stayed there for 40 days, 40 nights. He came out walking in the power of the Spirit, having overcome the devil. That night he prayed all night. And the following day, he called his disciples because ministry began. Amen. Okay? Praise the Lord. So will you get baptized in the next watery baptism? She said she will. Praise God. Amen. And Pastor just really put that so well. Amen. We thank God for the wisdom of, of um, the bishop of this house. Amen. Um, stretch your hands towards Sister Lucinda for me. We know Sister Lucinda. Do you know I know Sister Lucinda a long, long time? long time. And when I came here and she was introduced to the church, I think by Sister Minister Sasha. And she came and I was praying for her and she was whispering to me, where were you all the time? Where were you all the time? And oh, this woman asking me, where were you all the time? And it's afterwards I recognized who she was. Because I knew her from a used to live in Louisa. And look at it now. She, she, she found me again. And now she's a part of the family of Edgar. Amen. 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 So, Sister Lucinda, we thank God for you. She lost her sister at a very young age. And she's taking care of her children and her, and her sister's children. And I know it's very hard for her. I would pray that as God is mending everything around you and healing your home that God will continue to move into your life your marriage your home your everything your finance and I thank you for publicly announcing that you're accepting the Lord as your Savior may you live the life that will speak for you may the Lord Jesus Christ help you on the daily journey, because we know it's not going to be very easy to begin with. But as you take it one step at a time, and one day at a time, may you not look back. But know that you may rise, you may fall sometime, but you will rise again. When you feel down, don't stay down, get up again. God give her the strength and the courage to carry on. And we thank you for her life today, in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah. We, we, we thank God for Sister Lucinda. You may be seated. I, I'm just so I'm just so blessed today. Amen. Just really, really feeling blessed today. And I thank God for your life, but I also thank God that He has identified with me workers that can help me to do to carry on the work that he has called me to do in end time ministry. I thank God for over there to your right, you will see the group of lay, we call them lay ministers. What that means is that the Lord is laying them aside so that can, can all the ministers of end time ministry stand, that everybody can know you, the ministers that should be sitting in the front. Put your hands together for them. <laughs> pastor Brendan is my associate pastor. Sister Trisha, Minister Trisha, and Minister Cadian, and Minister Ozzy are the ministers of the church. Amen? Amen. So today, the other, there are two other ministers that are not here today. But today, we thank God for choosing a group of workers, ministers and workers, that will help us.
to carry on with the work of Almighty God. Sister Grace is one of our church workers. Sister Shekinah, you should be sitting over that side as well. Minister Sasha. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Put your hands together for them again. And so we thank God for your commitment to help me to build this church. And as I was saying to everybody that received right in the fellowship today, I cannot do it on my own. That's why God chose you. Because we need workers in the church, symbolic of the, the, the amount of work and the number of people that God wants us to reach. And I believe that God appoints you, chooses you, not me, because he sees that there's a big work to be done. There are people right now on the streets of New Cross that are taking drugs. That if somebody could just go out there and tell them about Jesus, they would be in the house of God. The same thing applied to Deptford. This is not the best of area, but it's the, it's the area where the, 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 the work of God needs to be done, where souls need to be reached for the kingdom of God. And it's all about souls. My husband can tell you that when I'm praying, I lay prostrate on my belly before God, crying for souls. Even if I don't have bread in my cupboard, it doesn't matter. And it, it never happened. Because the Lord always provides. But my priority is souls for the kingdom. I will spend countless times just crying out to God for the lost. Calling them out of the drugs den. Calling them off the street. Calling them from prostitution. Calling them from fraud. Calling them from the jailhouse. Calling them from unbelief. That, I pray that you will help me to do that. And we talked about revival in the church. And remember I was teaching, I was talking to you about the revivals that have broken out all over the world. And that many of these revivals came about because somebody prayed. And I think one of the revivals that really touched my heart when I was studying the revival that break out, broke out was the one in the Scottish revival. Ebedee's, the Ebedee's revival was the one that touched my heart. And that revival came about not because a whole big church was praying, but because there were two old ladies praying in a barn. Two old ladies prayed out a huge revival. What about us? So many of us. I charge you today that your first responsibility must be souls. Your first responsibility is to God. But your earthly responsibility souls for the kingdom of God. No minister in a church is allowed to be a minister without tithe. No. Your first responsibility, one of your responsibilities is to give unto God one tenth. I'm emphasizing it because it keeps the church out of bondage. It helps us to take care of our bills, but it also helps us to secure a place of our home. You need teachings. You need to grow in Christ. You need to have prayer chambers. We need morning glory. We need days of fasting. For example, now it's coming to the end of the year. For this all of December, we should be fasting and praying and gathering in the evening in preparation as we consecrate ourselves and prepare for the breakthrough and for what God will have us to do in 2013. We need our own building to do things like that. So with your prayer, we can do it. There's nothing impossible with God. And the same charge which I gave earlier on. The same charge which I gave the church earlier on is the same charge I'm giving to you. I know many of you have been workers in the churches that you're coming from. But I'm just reminding you of this body 
this temple that we live in. It belongs to Jesus. The Lord has blessed me with the apostolic anointing. And within the apostolic anointing is the gift of prophecy. And the gift of prophecy allows me to hear from God as you do know. And hearing from God means that I have to keep my spirit clean. My spirit is not clean, God is not going to speak to me. God don't pour clean wine into dirty bottles. If my mind is connected with the world, in order for God to speak to me, my husband will tell you, five hours a day sometimes belong to Jesus. I'm not saying that you should do it. <laughs> because not everybody can give God five hours a day. But I can do it because that's my priority, laying before God. Now, why am I saying that? Because I need you to, to develop a good prayer life. This is a prime ministry. Uh, there's times when I will be tired, I won't be able to see, you must see my eyes. God must speak to you. God must, there are times when God will not show me everything because some things will corrupt my spirit or cause me not to be able to deliver the message in the way I should, will trouble me. But sometimes God must show you that you will take the trouble off me and you will be praying for me. Amen? So by the time it reaches me, you've already killed it. Amen? Amen? So I pray that you will just stay close to Jesus. Keep your vessels clean. Keep your spirit clean. Remember your allegiance to God, but remember your commitment to end time ministry. Remember I showed you the organizational charges today. We have so many workers there, you know, so many slots for workers. Men's ministry, youth ministry, women's ministry, um, children's ministry, evangelistic ministry, prior ministry, the deacon board, the evangelist board. There's so many different church um, secretaries and church workers, altar workers, so many, so many stuff. So many things to be done for the body of Jesus Christ. And many of you have already identified the area that you, you, um, you will be working in and we will be developing you in those areas. But I pray today that as you come before God to labor with me in this vineyard, that you will, first and foremost, pull up the Lord Jesus Christ. That those of you that have families will remember that your families, your husbands and your wives are very important. And that you should watch over your family and be obedient. Women must be subject to their husbands. And husbands must respect and love their wives. Amen. We must be praying for our children and watching over them. And for those of you that are not married as yet, I'll be personally asking God for husbands and wives for you. Amen. Praise the Lord because we want you we want you to be married and settled because it's always the, 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 the need of a, of a young person that is not married to be married. Amen. So we're going to pray for you unless you tell me not to. If you don't want me to pray for you to get married, please tell me. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. But we thank God for you and we pray that you will work with me to help me to build the kingdom of God. Our conduct is very important. You know that I'm a woman of God that emphasizes dressing a lot. I like how you are dressed today. Amen. Even Sister Jules is wearing skirt. <laughs> Praise God. Even Sister Jules, everybody look nice. Everybody look beautiful in their nice dress. Could you dress like that on Sunday when you're coming? Praise God. Amen. We want you to shine, to stand out, to be different. Amen. We don't want people to look at you and don't know that you're officers. We're going to have some officers badge for you. Amen. I think the bishop um, would like to say a word to you. Put your hands for bishop. He's coming to say a word to you. Like I just feel led just to share what, um, as uh, Dr. Blake says, that he, she was consecrating ministers. And I just wanted to draw your attention to uh, Exodus chapter 17. You can read 
in your own time. It was a time when Israel was in trouble. And Joshua took on the kings to fight in the valley. And Joshua was losing the war. I think it's fair to say, on the face of things at the moment, it does look like we are losing the war. You listen to the news, we're losing the war. Every other legislation that is passed, the war is slipping through our fingers. Moses went up to the mountaintop to talk to God so that Joshua could succeed. Now I just want to say this to you because your prophetess will have to take it onto herself sometimes to get into the presence of God about this one. And sometime when she goes to the usual place that's not going to be enough. She will need to go further. An example is Jesus going to Gethsemane with his disciples to pray. And he felt he needed to go a little further. And he said, wait here. I go to pray. Moses went up and Aaron and Ur was with him. Just, 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 just follow me. Aaron and Ur was with him. And as he prayed, Joshua was still losing. And he said, I've got to go a little further. He was on top of the mountain. How does he get a little further? It's an experience that took him outside of his body. Into the presence of God. According to the word, as soon as this happened, his posture in the presence of God became apparent. But the body without the spirit started to collapse. And so the posture of the body in the natural needs to reflect his posture in the spiritual. Amen. And then the presence of God, his hands were held up. But when you are in that position, your body becomes vulnerable. Somebody has to watch out for the prophetess. She cannot be looking about her own business out of body. And when I talk about this, I'm not talking about some new age business. I'm talking about scripture. Moses was not weary. Why his hands needed to be held up. He did not become weak as such. He became weak because his spirit was not active anymore in his body. But in the presence of God travailing and the Bible said he held his hand, they held his hand up, and as they held his hand up, so was Joshua winning the war. And as they got distracted and his hand started to come down, Joshua started to lose the war. We need to be focused. And whatever you're committed to, whatever you sign up for, the moment you get distracted, I can tell you something is going to change. And so you are being installed today, consecrated today. It's not a show. And by the way, you're not being, you know, it's not my church, so I can't say certain things. But you really need to know you're not being consecrated into any high office in the eyes of people. It's, it's, it's. It really is not a status thing. 
Because the doubts that come at the prophetess, you are going to be in direct line of them because wherever she is, that's where you are. Praise God. And so you must look after her. You must make sure that she look after herself. And not be so heavenly minded that her body is not cared for. Amen. Amen. Let me just let me just finish. Since you came here, I noticed one woman mainly around you most of the time. Two things. In scripture we read about armor bearers. I'm not going to say too much about that because I don't want to put anybody off. But the armor bearers we see today is not what scripture talk about. Armor bearers were commissioned to bring the man of God back home alive. Armor bearers were told if anybody dies in battle it must be you first. We see armor bearers carrying Bibles. That was not their role. And sorry if I cross power. The Bible is a sword. You don't carry the woman of God's weapon. Strictly speaking. You carry armory. So when she shoots and shoots and shoots, you have to refill. Shoot and shoot and shoot. He said, refill, Bishop. Refill, Prophet. Refill. 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 Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, let me just. Let me let, make the last point. So, when we see armor bearers carry the man of God or the woman of God's Bible, it's just honoring them. And the Bible said, the least you do. But the last point that I really want to make is this. This woman who has been hanging around the prophetess. There was a time in Israel when three kings, 2 Kings chapter 17, three kings form an alliance. It was an unholy alliance. But Jehoshaphat knew God and refused to proceed without hearing from God. By this point, the known prophet was Elijah. But Elijah, by this point, had to be taken up. So Jehoshaphat said, Is there not a prophet? In Israel, of whom we could inquire. So we can know if this thing is what God wants us to do. Elijah was gone. Now, this is the part I wanted to listen to. The servant of the king stepped forward. And said, there is a man. Who used to throw water 
on the hands of the prophet. His name is Elisha. We know where to find him. The prophet says, the, the king said, go and bring him because the word of the Lord is with him. Now two things. The word of the Lord is with him. I want you to lock onto word. Because the word became flesh and dwelt among men and was the anointed one. Bring him because the anointing of the Lord is with him. The man who used to throw water on the prophet's hand. That's one. The last thing I just want to tell you. I'm a poor farmer's son from Jamaica. I know what it is to throw water on someone's hand. It's not something you do in the street. It's not no high office, Pastor. It's when the man go and ease himself and pull his trousers up. He is ceremonially unclean. So somebody needs to know throw water on the prophet's hand. Hallelujah. And if you find yourself called to hang around the pastor, wherever she goes, you need to know, hallelujah, that this anointing, oh, praise God, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, bless you, Lord, bless you. Jesus, somebody stand and give the Lord a praise. Somebody stand and give the Lord a praise. My God, my God.
brother over there with the prank law. If you could just, just if you don't mind taking that off. No, not yet. Just bring it, can I borrow it? Your prayer cloth? Thank you, thank you. This is a Jewish prayer cloth. And for the purposes of this exercise, this is the closest thing to the ephod. Now, this today is not used, but I hold it in my hand just to make a point to you. There's something called the ephod, which was an overgarment. And this overgarment is what the priest used to wear. Now, in scripture, when they have a service like this, they would hand out ephods to ministers. The prayer cloth is very much something that they use today, but not so much the ephod. I just hold this in order to make a connection with a piece of garment. All right? Thank you. Now let me tell you about the ephod. That overgarment. It's the piece of attire that Aaron wore when the Bible talks about the oil running down from his head onto his beard, onto the skirt. It wasn't a skirt as we know it. Skirt is not in scripture is not talking about material it's talking about the bottom of a particular material like we do skirting yeah. it's the bottom and so the oil would run down to the, the skirt now on the shoulders of the ephod there were two stones and, and, and I really want to share this with you because I said something there and I don't want you to become status people in the church. On the shoulders were two stones. Engraved on there was, on each was six names of the tribes of Israel. And on the other was another six. So every time the priest or the minister would kneel down, he or she kneels down with the burden of the people on his shoulder. And I just want you to know that you become carriers today. When you walk into the throne room, you do not go alone. You must get to know the people. You don't need to get to know their issues, their problems. What they're rejoicing about. And when you go in the throne room, you do not go alone. You must go with weight on your shoulder. That's why you are standing where you are standing today. The last man that took on the weight of everybody died under the Lord. His name was Jesus. It must not happen again. So let pastor not be the only one who's carrying the weight. Hallelujah. Somebody brought the oil. I think it's your pastor's right and duty. That's where the anointing flows from to you. Amen. Amen. It's your pastor's right and duty to anoint you today. And in her spirit, hallelujah, engage God according to the stream of power that she would have flow through. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So let me then pray as she anoints you. Hallelujah. Father, for it is your will, dear Lord God, that we complete today. 
Lord Jesus, we declare, dear Father, that these are called in your will to serve now. We declare them immortal whilst their mission is still alive. We declare that they cannot die until they complete that which you have asked them to do. Lord Jesus, here are our people. Lord Jesus, who have said yes to you. We will come all the way and go all the way. Lord Jesus, they have vowed to consecrate their lives and their bodies, Lord God. They have vowed to give their time, Lord Jesus, and their energy and their kind, dear Lord Jesus, to you, mighty God. Oh, Holy Father, I pray now, Lord Jesus, that the Spirit of God, oh, Lord God, will come up on them, Lord Jesus, to do that which you have called them to do. Ah, Sekoroboso. Ah, that which you have called them to do tonight. Lord, I pray for the full weight, my God, of the ephod to come upon them now, God. That weight of glory that they must walk into your presence with. Lord, as they come to know you, Lord Jesus, that we will seek your face, Lord. As you said, you look down to see if anybody understands, to see if anybody seek your face. Cause them, dear Lord, to seek your face. That they would understand, dear Lord Jesus, that they are not just bought with a price, but they are on a journey, that they are workers together with you, Lord Jesus, that when they look to their left, Lord, and when they look to their right, my God, surely, goodness and mercy, Lord, will be there to protect them, dear Lord Jesus. My God, that they will stand with Pastor, Lord God, knowing that the church does not belong to her, but belongs to you, Lord Jesus. And when she opens her mouth, Lord God, that they will know. Oh, praise God, praise God, praise God. Praise God. That thus saith the Lord, thus saith the Lord, thus saith the Lord. Oh, Sekoma, Mayoma, Kuriyembe Zamboya Kasai. Chibi Kuduriye Kisanda Kudurobo Sakata. Jesus Christ. Ah! I pray for discernment. Ah! Yes, Lord Jesus. Yeah, Lord Jesus. I pray for gifts of healing in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray that the prophetic voice will come out of your belly. Oh, eternal God. to declare the word dear Lord Jesus as they wait on you oh thank you Lord thank you Jesus thank you Lord oh hallelujah hallelujah so minister Lord God to your people oh yes Lord let your anointing now flow upon them I pray in the name of Jesus Christ Install them yourself now, Lord Jesus. According to their measure of faith, now, Lord God, give them gifts. And keep captivity captive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let me then invite you in your own time to read Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. And you will find out that this kind of a service is for three purposes. For the work of the ministry. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. 
for the building up of the church for the edifying of the saints hallelujah oh thank you Jesus oh glory be to God my last word Bless the Lord. <laughs> My last word is to the entire church. And it's really to put you on your guard. I've shared several scriptures, probably hard to remember them all. But it's very important for you to remember Acts chapter 5. There's a story about Ananias and Sapphira. Now I'm not teaching now about tithing. I'm not so much teaching about giving. I'm teaching about who you speak to when you speak to your pastor. And whom you answer when you answer your pastor. You see, the apostles had just come out of a time of prayer. And they were one with the Holy Spirit. And so when Peter asked a question in the church, he had no time to be himself to ask the question from his own vocabulary. The Spirit of God was still speaking through him. And he uttered the words of the Holy Spirit in no language, in no tongue. So one man and one woman thought that he was speaking of himself and decided that they would tell a lie. But he said to them, you do not lie to man, but you lie to God. And I say to the church, just be careful. Are you speak to your pastor? How you speak of your pastor or how you respond to your pastor. Because when your pastor get up out of the holy place and speak, there is not time to become self again. And when she open her mouth, it is utterance. And your response to that needs to be one to God. Because God speaks. Hallelujah. Praise God. There's one last thing I'd just like to do. I'd just like for pastor to come in the middle. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And for you just to make a circle around her. Make a circle around her. Hallelujah. Yeah, just, just form the circle around her. Let me step outside of it. And I want you to know as the woman of God physically become vulnerable because of her spirit's presence in the holy place. You are on guard all the time. Hallelujah. Her personal minister is on guard all the time. I heard her said this evening, I'm sure it was her, that when it might not have been, but when the enemy wants to scatter the blood, he strikes at the head. But can I just share something with you, Brother? Whenever something starts happening in the physical, it is something that the enemy is trying to do to destroy. Start 
existing in the physical is when you have one in the spiritual. When you move the place of the battle into the spiritual, you need to know that your weapons are not coming out so you can fight in this realm. Oh, hallelujah. And so when it distracts us and we now employ carnal weapon because of where is moved the battle to and we've got to use carnal weapon then we shift from the spiritual warfare and then whilst we turn on each other he goes back and he just finishes on us all. he works in a tactical way Jesus is one step ahead of him and we need to keep up with Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now I want you to just close the circle. Come in closer. Let nothing come in between you. Let nothing pass through. This is how I need you to be. Closing the ranks around your pastor. She should always be able to feel you. She should always be safe. Hallelujah. She can look out for herself physically sometimes. But she feels safe from the spiritual place where she is. Because somebody is always covering her. This chain remains unbroken. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Mighty God, I thank you, I thank you, I thank you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let me just close, but I saw Pastor, after a night, she put her shawl on some of you, representing the mantle of Elijah. When Elisha was touched with the mantle of Elijah, he forgot that he was a businessman. The Bible said he had a multi uh, a multi-million pound company. He had 12 heads of stock. My father was a farmer. He can only drive two, two cattle at once to plow. It means he had a company, people working for him. And when he got touched by the mantle, he forgot about it and he followed Elijah. It turned out that Elijah looked at his faithfulness and said, What can I do for you? God. And then he said, I double portion. And Elijah was having no that for you to get a double portion. I'll touch your head, need to get into your hand. And for it to get in your hand, you must stay focused. You must always be looking at the prophetess. Otherwise, you will miss it. If you can see when I go to be with the Lord. If you can see when... Oh, hallelujah. You know what? <laughs> I need to finish, but let me tell you something. The Bible said that Elijah and Elijah was now so close. It took the chariot of fire to pass between them to separate them so that God could take Elijah. By the way, let me tell you something about when fire passed between one. It's called covenant. Covenant was when one animal was caught in two and fire was passed down the ground. The two became not. Oh, hallelujah. Fire passed between them and a covenant was caught. You know what the master or a double person is doing if you can see the prophet. Oh, yeah.
Everything of yesterday are rooted out of the very foundation of the church. On this foundation, said the Lord, I replant this church. On a foundation of trust, of honesty, of integrity, of godly respect, of holiness and righteousness. Today I replant this church. I pour out my anointing and the blood in this. And the Lord kept the bishop in the house that he could not go. So that he could speak. The old anointing. When I say the old anointing, I mean this is not new. New anointing, I mean the new move. I mean the new church with anything goes. And because I'm bringing you back to the old landmark. To what the church is supposed to be, what it used to be. I kept the bishop from the old school. So that he can speak into the foundation. foundation that the spirit of God and the Lord says saying right now I will honor my word to entire ministry now that the mess has been cleaned out I've got good soil and fresh soil and which to sow Watch me now, say the Spirit of God. Just come work with me now and watch me, say the Lord. If I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour upon this church such a blessing, that as you open up your heart and your spirit to me and be submitted unto me, you, you will not have room to contain the blessings. And the souls will come running from the north, the south, the east and the west. And I'm preparing your hearts to receive them and they come running in. For the work that I'm starting is a work of sanctification unto me, say the Lord. For the revival which is about to hit the land in 2030. The move of God that is about to hit this land. I need this church to be a part of it, say the Spirit of Almighty God. I'm about to shake this land, say the Lord. Everybody's eyes will be turned to Britain now. You will find people wanting to come to Europe. People wanting to come to the UK. Because this is the soil that my eyes are turned to now, say the Spirit of God. Missionaries of old. They will pack their bags and come like they are going to no man land. Because I will send them to speak a word. Because my eyes are turned to the Lord upon this nation. Some of the greatest revival on earth started somewhere in Europe, and that is why I'm going back to the old landmark. I have not forgotten this land, say the Lord. I've not forgotten the work of Spurgeon, I've not forgotten the work of Evans. I've not forgotten the great revivalists. I've not forgotten the Welsh revival. 
I've not forgotten the Aberdeen revival. I've not forgotten that some of the great men of the gospel stayed up all night to pray for this land. Yes. And when you talk of the prayers, I've always forgotten the Lord said, I'm returning now because of the prayers that were said. Many years ago before you and I were born, thus said the Lord, begin to pray out the revival. I hear the Lord say, this group, begin to pray out the revival. Because I'm in a hurry, say the Lord. I'm going to be doing this thing in a hurry. So thus say the Lord, begin to pray out the revival. Let this be your priority. Because my eyes are turned on this nation. While they are planning the attack, I'm planning the revival. Say the spirit of Almighty God. And major doors. At the anointing hit the pulpit. It is going to run to many of you as the pastor told you. I thank God for pastor, for bishop. For opening the doors of Bawtree Road bring a time ministry in. May we always remember the family of Montreal Road, the Testament Church of God. May we remember to pray for them. Heal the land, Lord. Heal the land, Lord. For the church is about to experience the worst persecution that has ever been seen upon the land. And because of the persecution that's about to come upon the church, that is why I'm raising up my people that will seek my face with their own heart. For unless you pray, I will not all be able to hold back the hands of the enemy upon the church, the onslaught that is coming upon the church. Not in time ministry, but the church of the living God in this land. Look out, say the Lord for sudden earthquake and disaster. But in the midst of it, I will be there. With plane crash. And I will be there for you. Pray over your children, pray over your sons and daughters. That they do not be in the wrong place at the wrong time. God bless you as you sit down again. Oh God, there's such an anointing in you. Oh, there's a sweet anointing in the sanctuary. Oh, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In the presence of the Lord. Oh, this anointing is so awesome. bringing you back to the old landmark. I could have put you anywhere, say the Lord. But you must understand that I'm a God of integrity. And God is going to just purify us so much before he send us out. We are like the baby church in Acts. That God is to find before we go out. It is so full of Jesus right now, but I'm going to do two more things before we before we go. Everything let everything be done in order. We have had so much people coming to church and do things disorderly. Last night I got a very I got a call that made me laugh. But it made me proud. I'm gonna call one of my two of my children to come to the front now. Sister Shernet and Brother Derek, put your hands together for them at the time. Brother Derek. 
give a man a few words. So he's not going to give a speech. Amen. But I would like Brother Derek to tell us why I called him. Amen. Brother Derek, can you tell everybody why I called him? Yes, um, Sister Charlotte, I want you in my life. Very soon when we will be invited to cut the cake with them. God bless you. 